Hey guys, it's me and my buddy Javier Mota. Am I saying that right? Yes. How's my Spanish? Yes, Javier? Roman Mica. That's how I'm saying it right. <laughs> it's actually Roman Micha. I'm sure. Roman Micha. Okay. Yeah, there's, well, a, there's a little hot chick over the. Oh, but you didn't write it like that, so no. how would I would know? <laughs> no, no. Hey, you're right. And you know, Spanish is a much more popular language than Czech. So yeah, yeah. A Czech Republic guy, a guy from Mexico, driving a Swedish car in the desert in the U.S. <laughs> wow, that's mind blowing, dude! I'm <laughs> on dirt. Well, that exactly. So that's right. We're just driving the new Volvo B90 Cross Country, which is like the fourth member of the S90 family from Volvo. Started with the XC90, that won SUV of the year a couple years ago in Detroit, and the uh, S90, that was finalist for that award. The B90, which is a beautiful car, but it's not as popular here in the U.S. That's why I guess I didn't, didn't win any awards. And now this one. Yeah, you know, this thing looks like a spaceship, dude. It's slow, it's sleek, it's got that uh, Thor's hammer in the headlight. This is by far the sexiest station wagon you can buy, period. End of story, I'm done. Yeah, well, you're, before you're done, let's ask about your theory why this kind of car are not popular in the U.S. Because, as you said, it has everything. Style, power capability of road, uh, utility for the day-to-day -day thing, but still people keep, keep buying crossovers and SUVs. Yeah, and that's because you don't sit high, right? You can't see over the top of other people. It doesn't have that commanding driving position here. It's more like you're in a sports car. And let's be fair, there's a little bit less room here than there would be like in the XC90, but right? not that much more. I mean, yeah, much more much, less in yeah, this case, I yeah, guess. Yeah, right? it's, it's not much less, but nevertheless, I love wagons, dude, you know? I mean, I think they're the cat's pajamas. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and I'm... I remember when I was a little kid from Mexico City to Acapulco, the yep. beach down there in the Pacific, my, my uh, uncle used to have, I don't remember the specific model, but I'm gonna say it was a Chevy or like a, a Ford Galaxy 500 station wagon, something like that. And we, we will have like eight kids in the back. <laughs> and like my, my uncle driving us down to the beach, he was great. But, and I actually started driving gonna get uh, a little bit mind blown by this too. Uh, AMC Rambler station wagon. That's where I started to drive. <laughs> that was where AMC was Rambler. Dude, I know. that is old school. <laughs> AMC Rambler. It had the stick shift here in the column. Yeah. And that's where I. That was my first ever car to drive. My mother actually taught me how to drive it. So. Yeah, they're they're you know station wagons around the world are. Uh, waning in popularity and it's like the dinosaur right the dinosaur is slowly but surely dying out but dude this is nothing like a dinosaur it's modern it's off-road capable it's beautifully almost custom bespoke tailored on the interior yeah. it's got one of the best ip controls and in that's the a great thing because being the member of the s90 family which is like the, the car that pretty much saved Volvo as a company and it has inherited all of that great technology, the auto pilot assist, the lane keep assist, all the, as you say, the, the nine screen, the nine inch screen here, though it's like really easy to use. And actually all the luxury. I mean, like these new cars from Volvo are like fantastic. Yeah, you know, what could be more luxurious than a station wagon from Volvo? I've owned two Volvos, Javier, and They've both been station wagons because I love them so much. I had the V70, which was kind of the very square first yeah. cross country, and then I had the. Really they had one there, like 190, yep, 199. Exactly. Yep. yep, and then I had the V70R, which at that time had 300 horsepower, and I thought that that was crazy amount of power coming out of five cylinder. And it's funny, you know, Volvo really does do a cutting edge technology, right? This has a 316 horsepower supercharged turbocharged four cylinder. Kind of four cylinder. Four cylinder. 360 horsepower, 295 pounds. For an all-wheel drive car, too. Yeah, for an all-wheel drive car. And it will tow 3,500 pounds. You know, that's incredible. And still give you, let me if I remember, 22, 25, and 30, right? Yep, exactly. City, highway, and average, mile per gallon, which is like amazing for a car this size. You can see very comfortable, five people in here, a lot of cargo space in the back, tow, as you mentioned, a small boat, but still do that and I, I like, it's amazing. When you ask Volvo how many units, how many cars do you think they'll sell? And they said not hundreds of thousands, not tens of thousands, but <laughs> thousands. Maybe. Two thousand, So if you're into Volvo wagons, you're gonna be one, Javier, they sold 16 
million, million almost cars, 17 million. million cars last year in America. Yeah. And Volvo expects to sell 2,000 of these. You will not see this. Uh, very exclusive, too. Very exclusive. You will not see this coming or going anywhere. Uh, and they are out of production capability because it's so popular in the rest of the world, right? Their production Well, I mean, great. like the whole thing with the XC90, the S90, I mean, all the all their newer cars are like super popular. I mean, again, this new model and like this new era from when Volvo was bought by the Chinese company, yep. that really has changed everything. And the good thing that they're doing, the same thing that happened with Jaguar Land Rover when the Indian group Tata bought them from Ford. They came in, put the money, and let let them do their thing. Yep. And that's what is happening here, and that's why you're seeing like the who, yeah, like who, who revival of Volvo. You know, when when the Chinese bought you know, the Chinese company bought Volvo, everybody was afraid that all they were doing was a technology grab, yeah. right? They were just buying basically technology that Ford had developed because at that time Ford owned them, Absolutely. and they and, and they instead of developing like the, instead of developing it themselves, they decided that they could just easier purchase it and in the end it was nothing like that they put a lot of money into the company and trust the Swedish people to do their trust thing. the Swedish people to do their thing and these beautiful cars is what they came up with what do you think of the design language with that kind of Thor's hammer in the headlight oh I love it and I think it's very distinctive you can now that you've seen the other three models from this family you can identify them just by that I mean it's like a very elegant application of the LED technology in the headlamps and like it completes with everything else all the because those lines repeat here on the in the dashboard like everything everything is so refined and, and elegant i love these little details too <laughs> the swedish flag in the scene like that puts the, the cherry at the top of the ice cream yeah it's a little easter egg that's hidden yeah um the other thing i would say is this control for all the major systems is so intuitive, so easy to do. You know, I can think of, let's say, a German manufacturer that does a screen within a screen within a screen. I think it's I <laughs> something. Maybe two German manufacturers. Yeah, yeah, I something. I don't know what it's called, but <laughs> something. Anyway, uh, and that one, to me, is completely in operable. It's because, complicated. Yeah, it's yeah. complicated, yeah. You know, just trying to save a preset is, is a trip to the... Uh, internet because you have to figure out how to do that here it's so simple it's so logical it's so the well big screen yeah. and uh, it's so easy to do so um roman tell us a little bit about where i mean a lot of people already know where to find you yeah. but for those who don't where yeah. where's your stuff yeah of course uh you can find us at tfl car and tfl truck.com uh we've got three youtube channels uh the newest one javier is we're doing one called tfl now where we go live uh, this morning, actually, I live streamed the product presentation. Yeah. yeah, it was one of those terrible presentations where every reporter had Not to ask the presentation, in fact, like the questions from the, the questions. Yeah, the presentation was good, but everybody had to ask their questions, so that was kind of frustrating. <laughs> but it's live, you know. We're trying to do live now because YouTube allows you to do that, so you're going to get warts and all. Yeah, let's uh, take advantage of the amazing technology that we can and use today. So thank you very much, Ron, for your time and uh, take me to lunch now, please. Yeah, rock and roll. Let's go eat, man. Pilot assist to lunch. Yeah, pilot assist to lunch. <laughs> there's, luckily, there's no off-road pilot assist yet, but I'm yeah. sure that's coming as well. Ooh, Ooh, a little, bit of, a little bit of a slide there. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.